Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Thanks again for joining me here at the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Uh, as you note, uh, last week, uh, the last show I did, I did head with uh, with Sharon Acid, and we spoke about the whole issue of the Columbia River crossing, and she brought up some issues on the on the Oregon side and some of the issues that were there. She's also very much involved in uh, uh, in the Washington side too. Just just concerned citizens, you know, uh, about this issue. I think there's no opposition about the fact that uh, we need the jobs and whatever, uh, but it's just the honesty about uh, uh, spending public monies and and making sure they communicate to the public at large about what what are we doing. Well, this is sort of an ongoing situation. So this particular week, in this particular show, what we're going to do, we're going to basically spend some time on the Washington side. And I have with me today a gentleman by the name of Larry Patella, who happens to be uh, very active in the, in the whole issue of the CRC, and more specifically in the whole the, the light rail aspect of it that's going over there. But he's got a number of things to be said uh, along that line. So we're going to spend some time with him. And in doing so, uh, I also had the opportunity about a year ago to interview a, um, uh, a financial audit uh, uh, forensic forensic person, a gen- gen- lady by the name of Tiffany Couch, and uh, and so what I'm thinking about doing is that uh, we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna give you the opportunity to see that to re- see that interview again with Tiffany that I did about a year ago, and uh, basically what this forensic is, she basically went down and just checked the books out. Mm-hmm. And uh, in doing so, um, uh, there were some very interesting comments that were made about that line. So we're going to go on and spend some time with her, and then we're just going to get right into, um, uh, after, we, after we get through playing that, um, Larry and I are going to spend some time, and, and he's going to kind of give you a feel of what Washingtonians in Vancouver, Washington, are, t- are saying about the uh, Columbia River crossing from that particular point on. Uh, but again, before we, we get into that, uh, give us a couple of minutes or so. I want to introduce Larry because the thing is, is that, uh, like me, uh, we both spent some time in the military. Uh, he was in the Navy. In fact, he retired out of the Navy. He retired out of the Navy and uh, just so happened uh, he was in Vietnam too. With uh, and he, had, he, he spent some time there in, in Vietnam and we'll, we'll spend a little bit of time with But let's give a little, uh, I want, before we get into Tiffany's uh, uh, piece, why don't we spend a little time with, with Larry for a minute? Larry, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Good, good, good. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about Larry. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, uh, a young fellow that uh, was uh, born in Connecticut, joined okay. the Navy when I was uh, 17 years old, uh, worked my way up through the ranks and got to be a commissioned officer, uh, uh, spent uh, a lot of time uh, in the uh, Vietnam area, uh, had command of uh, three different amphibious ships, uh, had wonderful time with the Marines, which I understand you uh, yes. are one. Yes, right, and, exactly. Uh, and anyway, and uh, I, uh, after I retired, I settled in the uh, uh, Vancouver area and uh, have lived there ever since. Wow. You know, before we were, uh, you, you told me several stories, if you will. We're going to do this, we're going to do this again when we do a whole hour or whatever. Why don't you share one of those stories, I think you, you said the one off of Powell Boulevard, remember you said the well, it's been a long time, and you've seen it. Well, uh, well uh, about uh, two months ago, uh, I was over in Portland uh, for some, uh, uh, on some business, and on the way back, uh, my wife and I, we stopped at uh, Wendy's restaurant on Powell Boulevard. Yeah. And uh, we sat down, and we were starting to eat, and across the, just a few feet away from us at another table were three, uh, three uh, African Americans, uh, and uh, and this one fellow was, was kind of large. He was a tall, uh, well-built man. And he kept looking at me uh-huh. and looking at me. And, uh, and I looked at him, and I kind of uh, recognized him, but I couldn't place who he was. And after a few moments, he said, uh, is your name Patella? And I said, yeah. And he said, Larry Patella? And I said, yeah. And he said, were you in the Navy? And I said, yes. And... Uh, he said, were you the captain of the Mount Vernon? And I said, yes. And he jumped up out of his chair and shouted so that everyone in the Wendy <laughs> restaurant uh, could hear him in a very loud voice. He said, he said, he was my captain. 
He said he was my captain, and I love him. Wow. And, and wow. Uh, his name was Charlie Slaughters, and he lives uh, in the uh, Portland area here. Yeah. And uh, and anyway, and uh, he got up from his seat, and he, he approached me, and I got up, and I thought we were going to shake hands. Instead, uh, he just uh, picked me up off the ground and hugged <laughs> me and told everybody in place over and over again. He said... He was my captain. He said, I loved him. He said, I was a barber, and I used to cut his hair. But, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was great. My wife and I both wound up with tears in our eyes. Wow. We were, it Boy, was, you, uh, I can get him now. <laughs> so, so very moving. Uh, oh, wow. Wow, Larry. That's really good. Well, you know, in all due respect, we're going to spend some time with Larry. We're going to, so he can give, we're going to just share some of, our, some of our stories. Right. We're going to talk a little bit about that piece. He spent, he spent what, some 30-some-odd years? 31 years. 31 years, 31 right? years mm -hmm. in the Navy, whatever. And then moved to the Pacific Northwest about how long ago? No, oh, back in 76. Back in 76. Mm -hmm. Been here ever since, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. And so then you start getting involved in the whole issue uh, of right. Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to spend a little bit more time about that. We're going to go on and, and look at this piece with Tiffany, mm -hmm. and then we're going to come back, and then we're going to just spend some time with Larry and talk about Washingtonians up in Vancouver and how they reacted to this whole issue of the CRC or the Columbia River Crossing. Okay, let's see if we can get this done now, okay? And we've got Tiffany Couch here with us. That, that you that said right? that right. Tiffany Couch, okay. And she's with the Equity Group. Right? Acuity Group. Acuity Group, okay. And, it, and basically what it amounts to, it's a, it's a CPA type of a firm, right? We are a non-traditional CPA firm. Non-traditional. That's like right, that. non meaning we don't do tax returns okay. in, in our office. It's 100% forensic accounting work. Forensic. Forensic oh, boy, accounting. Work. I've heard that. I've heard that, that that forensic piece, whether it be in the, in the death of a person, something. Like, but now you've got forensic and, and money issues. Following the well, money. Well, that's right. It's following the money, and the forensic part comes into the fact that I'm often called in as a as an expert witness in court to testify to a judge or a jury as to what happened to other people's money. And so the forensic part kind of wow. comes in there. And how did you get in this business with the whole issue with the CRC? Well, I was approached by a gentleman uh, named David Medor. He is a private business owner in Vancouver, Washington. Mm -hmm. He owns a uh, multinational, biz international business mm -hmm. and employs well over 100 people in Vancouver. And the way he tells it is he woke up one day and figured that he needed to help um, shed some light on some things in his community and he felt like he had the resources to do that. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he um, targeted was the Columbia River crossing. Mm -hmm. um, he was reading um, the newspaper articles and not really happy about some of the issues that were mm -hmm. coming to light. So he started asking more questions. Mm -hmm. And in asking more questions, and, and his basic question was, where is the money gone? What have right. you spent the money on? And the Columbia River Crossing Project Office gave him 724 electronic data files, mm -hmm. each having thousands of data, thousands of pages of data inside them. So literally, he probably had 10,000 documents sitting on a server from somewhere. The beginning. From, from the, the beginning. beginning. From the beginning. And so he called me and said, you know, I understand you're a forensic accountant. Can you come and help me disseminate what are in these documents? And so I sat down with him and I said, well, Mr. Medor, you've, you've asked for the wrong thing. We just need to get some accounting reports here. I said, where's the job cost report or what kind of accounting reports do you have? He's a business owner. Mm -hmm. I'm a business owner. I said, how do you make decisions? You don't make decisions on all the data. Right. You make decisions on your financial reports. And he said, well, you're right. I s and he said, we're having a meeting next week. Why don't you come along with me? And I said, you know what? We'll just get the financial reports. It should disseminate you know, where all the money is gone. And you're really not going to need me to go through the documents because the reports well, sh should, should support should right all of this exactly. data. Okay. Okay. And uh, so right around April, uh, the beginning of April last year, 2011, mm -hmm. we went to the Columbia River Crossing Project office, just he and I. There were seven or eight people to meet us there at the office, and there were an additional six or seven people on the phone in Olympia. Literally half, a dozen to, to 15 people there to meet just with him and I. And the first thing I asked for were documents. And they said, oh, well, wait, we're here to give you all of the data dump from our accounting system. And mm -hmm. I said, well, I don't need all of that data. I just want an accounting report that tells me the money coming in and the money going out. Right, right, right. right. And they said, well, ma'am, we don't have that. 
don't have. And I said, that's what I said. I said, you don't have. <laughs> I said, well, how do you make decisions? How do you figure out you know, where you're at in the project and budget to actual and those sorts of things? Mm -hmm. And they said, it's really very difficult. We, we really don't have good reporting. And they were representing what? Both states, right? The state of Oregon um, and Washington? I'm not sure. You know, the CRC project office, it's my understanding they have both Oregon DOT right. people and um, Washington DOT right. people sitting there. So mm -hmm. there very well could have been a mix. Okay. Um, but they were all CRC related people mm -hmm. or Washington State accounting representatives in mm -hmm. Olympia. Mm -hmm. So wh what did they say? What they they literally to told me they did not have um, summary accounting reports for the project, that that was, quote, difficult to obtain and I said okay well how do you make decisions how do you approve invoices you know some of these very basic things and they said it was very difficult because Oregon was paying some of the money and Washington was paying some of the money and that they were finding it difficult to do to have a summary accounting report. But if they made the statement here, Oregon had some of the money and spending, and Washington was spending some of the money. Well, okay. Well, where, where is that money? Well, Did that's what it? I. They said, well, well, we gave you all of the documents to support the payments, and I said, I understand that you gave me ten thousand documents, mm -hmm. but what is that? What do those ten thousand dollar ten thousand documents mean? Mm -hmm. And Mr. Medor said, you know, you gave us a lot of data, but all of that data does not give us any information. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, that's why we're here today. We would like to give you a data dump from our accounting system that basically supports all the checks written on the CRC. Mm -hmm. So they literally gave me a native um, Microsoft Excel spreadsheet that had tens of thousands of lines. Mm -hmm. And it was my job to basically take that and figure out the payments that the state of Washington made by vendor for the CRC project. So I disseminated their accounting. You mean you went their, through that whole piece, basically? Oh, yes. Wow. Because they didn't have a report to give me. Right. So I had to create right. a report to try and figure out who got paid what dollar amount um, on this project. Well, should that not uh, be a part and parcel of the process, if you will? When money, I'm saying, when money is a, a dispensed or whatever to to any contractors alike. You yeah. know, in April of 2011, they had already spent 108 million dollars. 108 million dollars. And so my concern was, how in the world can you not have a, a basic accounting report to to justify 108 million dollars of expenditures quickbooks you know something right, most right, small right, business right. can go out and buy for 300 mm dollars -hmm. could have handled this project hmm. um, I, it it should not have been difficult to to be able to have something so, uh, so, so I, I'll, I'll take it this way as a layperson i'll say okay fine you got the documents now you want through an exhibition now you can tell the story so to speak i guess i have degree, okay to some degree been able to tell the story okay. so let's say first day okay before they when the idea came about right mm -hmm. the idea who, who basically brought up the idea about the possibility that we needed a bridge across uh, a new bridge if you will across the columbia river you know that's a good question there's some debate about that um, as to the reasoning behind mm -hmm. it. I wasn't there. I didn't even live here then. Mm -hmm. um, but I do know that from day one, which was 2000. years back, about. Years back, 1999, 2000. 1999, 2000. They started studying the corridor. They started studying I-5, 205. They started studying options. We have all of these studies from 1999 to 2004. And they, ODOT and ODOT and WASHDOT. Okay. It looked like a lot of those were joint yeah, projects that's, no, between that's what the they two. Normally do with those projects, yeah. And they these these reports clearly show that there were there were options for a third bridge or multiple bridges um, their own studies clearly show that i5 was full and 205 was full or close to being full and that they needed to look at other you know like a third bridge mm -hmm. option um, and so it's really unclear why when you read all of these studies between 99 and 2004 when the actual columbia river crossing project started mm -hmm. Um, they basically went to an, an I-5, how are we going to fix an I-5 uh, project instead of, it, it just, instead of um, referring to some of these earlier studies. Okay, so, so, so my, my thought was, again, this, the first discussions was at ODOT and WASHDOT, and they were about communicating against with, with one another because so, yes. of the And then all of a sudden someone says, okay, fine, we need to do this. And so what the process is, uh, let's basically get some idea, some rendering, if you will, of what this might look like, right? I would, I
would say that's true. And so in 2000, late 2004, early 2004, SCART, as of the last I heard, said, we are not going to sign off or give mm -hmm. our blessing on this project because, but you the know. The public was told, yes, it was. It was going to be built. I mean, we had the money. The bridges, the, the rendering had been accepted, except the, the environment. So I'm just asking, what about the key consultant, if you will, David Evans? Should he not have made note of the fact that the Coast Guard said this about a year or so ago? It would be interesting to understand why some of these things have happened. We had a bridge that they, they did a rendering of that the independent study said, we can't build that bridge, it's right. not physically possible. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some things here that have gone on, the half a billion dollars, they are half a billion dollars in in a funding hole, meaning they think they're going to get a certain amount of money to pay for this, and other experts are saying, no, you're half a billion dollars off. So there are some benchmarking things that seem to be lacking, and it doesn't make sense to most people why those sorts of things haven't been, um, let's say, called a timeout and, and fixed mm -hmm. before we keep moving forward. You know, I noticed that uh, I was at our state treasurer for Oregon, Ted yes. Miller had made the point of didn't he? Didn't yes, he, he did. In, in fact, he, he probably took his information from Joe Courtright, who initially came up with that number. And Joe Courtright? Joe Courtright is a local economist here in Portland. And then Mr. Williams, I think is his name, the treasurer, Wheeler. Wheeler. Wheeler, yeah, Wheeler. Wheeler. He went out and got his own experts, two different experts, hmm. for the state of Oregon mm -hmm. to figure out what they thought was going to be you know the financing number for the project and each of those experts evidently came to the same they conclusion they the same. that they was, were concerned that they are grossly underestimating the amount of money that they'll receive from tolling. So Tiffany, what about the public, the, the, the average public like us? We're the one that are basically funding the monies, okay? Yes you and are. So hopefully we all are. We've elected officials, if you will, that are looking out for our interests. What do we do? I think you've got to call your local legislators. A lot of them are coming on board or starting to understand this. And the more I travel to Salem or I travel up to Olympia, the more understanding they're gaining. They're the ones that are approving these budgets. They're the ones that are, um, you know, approving the appropriations. And they need to, they need to know that their constituents are are worried about the way their money is What about our spent? congressional delegation? I mean, we're, sending, we're spending federal funds on this stuff here. That's, That's federal, right. I.e. federal taxes, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. we got a congressional delegation here. we got uh, Senator Wyden. We've got, well, I don't know. The Herrera other, Butler is in Butler. our... we got a whole bunch of folks, if you will. Now, you, I would think they would also have to be a sort of a sign-off entity in this whole issue. They're aware. I know that our congresswoman uh, from Southwest Washington, uh, Jamie Herrera Butler, she is very much on top of this project. She's demanding that the people of Southwest Washington get a vote. Um, so I know she's very aware. Wow, wow. Well, then, like I say, on the other side of the river, you would think that Congressman Blumenauer should be the responsible entity over sure. this side of the deal, but you hear nothing about him. I mean, well, I, I really got a concern. I really have a concern about this mug grab. I want to know. In fact, if, can you, if you can get that information, well, I get we, it. We need to it's get there. The, we need to get that information. That can know when, when as when he when he got on consulting and and all, and when and whether or not he was working for the congressman at the same time. And I would invite the congressman to come on the show with the Oregon Voters Digest here and take on some responsibility, if you will. This is a very sensitive issue right now. The public's very irritated what they've seen, and thank goodness for the Oregonian in many ways, and thank goodness for you. Well, thank you. I know that a lot of people are starting to uh, understand what's going on. Well, no, it's, important. it's just begun, right? I agree. But we got to stop this money. So evidently, we got to get in touch with our, as you say, our legislative legis state. It's so important. And An email or a phone yes. call, they listen. Sounds good, Tiffany. Tiffany, look, we're going to stop at this point in time, but next week we're going to probably put on, the, we're going to get some folks who will kind of give us a little up to date on the whole issue of the CRC. And while you're putting together that money piece, maybe you can come during that particular point in time, too. I'd be happy to anytime. Right. Tiffany, thank you very much. Thank you. Good information. Appreciate that very much. Thank you. I appreciate okay. it. Okay, folks. What we'll do, we're going to take a short break, and then we'll be back with our second half of the show. Okay? Welcome again back, folks. As you can see, uh, some very interesting comments. In fact, that's, that was about a year ago. That was about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And here we are sitting here today still trying to figure out what to do. And you would think that, you know, uh, who's supposed to be doing the watchdog, you would think, you know, I'm, that's the thing. there's some people like attorney generals, I mean, there's all kinds of folks, right? Yeah, Within our midst, right? Yeah, but uh, now, yeah. going on that, take it from here. Not, not too many of them seem to be, uh, seem to be doing uh, anything. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in, uh, in that the, the people should have a voice and the people yeah. should decide uh, 
what we're going to do and why we're going to spend all this money and uh, what it's going to bring to us, and yet uh, all of this has occurred with uh, with little or no input uh, from the people. Uh, the powers that be keep saying, uh, "Well, we've had all of these uh, all of these uh, meetings and we put out all this information, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, but there's never been a two-way conversation. Mm -hmm. It's always been it's always been." They tell us, and we just sit and listen. Uh, for instance, uh, yesterday morning I uh, was at a uh, at town hall meeting where they had uh, several politicians, and they had uh, the uh, directors from Oregon and Washington who were in charge of the uh, CIC. They had the uh, visitors convention people. They had the Chamber of Commerce. They had uh, labor unions and everyone there, and. Uh, and all they did was lecture to us for two hours, hmm. uh, and uh, and we really didn't get to have any any input. So no input. No input. So so it, it, it's my firm belief that the, that the you know the voters, the taxpayers need to have some input. So someone needs to listen to listen to uh, what we have to say and uh, tell us how our hard-earned tax dollars are going to be spent and why we're why our tax increases just keep going up and up and up and it it's it's uh you know the washington state constitution and i'm sure probably oregon one too says that the that the uh that that the politicians uh, derive their powers from the people mm -hmm, but right. uh, but uh, that's supposed to be a government of the people yeah, by yeah, the people yeah, for yeah, the people, and, right? yeah and uh and uh, and we're supposed to be living in a representative government, right? And uh, right. and yet I keep hearing politicians tell me, well, 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 we we were elected to do these things for you. No, you weren't elected to do anything for me. You were elected to represent me. <laughs> right, right. So, but and that's a that's a hard point to uh, to to get across. But uh, I think I think the project is a uh, is a uh, is is going to cost the taxpayers. Ten million, ten billion plus dollars. I yep. mean, they, they yeah, keep saying right. three point five, yep. but but historically, these kinds of projects have gone from anywhere from from thirty to uh, two hundred percent mm -hmm. over budget. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and there's no reason to see why if this one does uh, go through that it's going to cost th that much money. Mm -hmm. uh, the they keep complaining about uh, they keep complaining about uh, congestion, uh, yet. Uh, they're going to replace uh, a perfectly good three-lane bridge with a new three-lane bridge. So I, I, I've, I have difficulty in understanding how that's going to uh, reduce congestion. Mm -hmm. uh, the, <clears throat> the other problem is uh, uh, if you come across the bridge today, uh, as soon as you get across the bridge, because of the bottleneck here in, uh, in uh, downtown Portland mm -hmm. area, uh, it, we go from three lanes to two lanes. Uh, there's a traffic jam all the way from that area uh, up to the bridge. So, so, uh, and when I asked someone, uh, "What about that bottleneck there?" They said, "Well, that's something we'll have to do later." So, uh, but it would appear to me that if we were doing this thing correctly, that would be something we should have done first, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, and 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 then build on that. But. Uh, uh, I, I'm of the opinion that, uh, uh, like, uh, like uh, Tiffany says, you know, there's there's so much money that has been spent that's, that's unaccountable for that that the uh, that the CRC in both Oregon and Washington are spending money as quickly as they can, uh, so that they will be able to put us in a position that says, uh, well, you know, we've gone this far, so uh, we spent. So many millions of dollars. There's uh, we can't turn back now. We we've got to continue on, which is, you know, not. Well, who's making those decisions? Who's uh, making the decision? Well, you got governors in each state. Right? Well, I I, signed, yeah, I would think they would have to sign off on this stuff, wouldn't you think? Yeah. Well, I, you would you would think, but uh, but but all the, with exception of a few, most of the politicians in, in any position of authority are 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 supporting this, and yet. And yet, as Tiffany points out, there's an awful lot of pu people getting rich yeah. over, off of this, uh, off of this, uh, this project. And uh, uh, and and the voice of the people is such that uh, you know, 
we and uh, it, they keep telling us that uh, we got to have light rail. Uh, the the ex Portland mayor says no light rail, no bridge, and so. Uh, and and when we ask why do we have to have light rail, they say, well, the federal government says that's mandated. To, but but uh, we in Vancouver, we have voted uh, about four times that we do not want light rail. You know, uh, it's too expensive. Uh, it uh, it's fixed uh, and uh, uh, it's not going to save anybody mm -hmm. anything. And it's something that will have to be subsidized forever and ever and ever. Uh, I think the Portland right rail system is somewhere between 15 to 20 million dollars in debt. So uh, we don't want to we don't want to have to become part of that debt by bringing Portland's light rail in, into Vancouver. Uh, it's been I think it's been proven over and over again that uh, that bus transit is more flexible, less expensive, and uh, and it 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 takes less time to get from point A to point B. Well, tell me this, on, 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 on the Washington side, as far as Washingtonians is concerned, what are your politicians telling you folks, your folks? What are they telling you? Are you talking to them, the, the governor and, and the... We're, we're, uh, we are attempting to talk to them. Are they talking to you? Uh, no, they're not, they're not responding very well. Uh, uh, we, we've uh, collected a sufficient number of petition signatures to put the light rail issue on the ballot. Okay. What the light rail petition says is that that the city of Vancouver, it prevents the city of Vancouver from spending any taxpayer dollars or any in-kind services on light rail without a vote of the people. Mm -hmm. Well, we collected enough petition signatures and, uh, and uh, they uh, we collected thousands more than we really needed, but uh, but the uh, city of Vancouver and the uh, and the uh, Clark County uh, auditor uh, decided that uh, that there were some 1,200 petition signatures that were were inadvertently uh, signed twice. People duplicated their signature, and it's and it's easy to understand when it's, when. Signature gathering goes from, uh, from say, from January to September. Mm -hmm. You know, it's difficult for a person to remember. Mm -hmm. Hey, did I sign that thing back in January? Or you know, but, well, I'll just go ahead and sign. But and the Supreme Court of, <coughs> of Washington ruled that when that happens, that <coughs> that uh, at least one petition signature should be counted, not all 1,200 of them be thrown out. Mm -hmm. Well, they threw all 1,200 of our signatures out, so that <coughs> that made us. 32 signatures short, so that which prevent our petition from getting on the ballot. So I and several other people have filed a lawsuit uh, against the the county auditor uh, to make our law make our uh, petition signatures valid. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to have a hearing on that on March 27 in Kelso, Washington, uh, Superior Court. So but, you're fighting your own money. Yeah, we're fighting right. One of the things I complain, <laughs> one of the things I complained to the politicians uh, just the uh, this past Monday to the to the Clark County Commissioner, <clears throat> told him I needed some help. I say when when uh, when the s politicians want to challenge we the people, right. they use our tax dollars right. to hire right. lawyers and yep. do all of those things and say yes. I said it only would seem fair to to me that that when we the people would want to challenge something that the politicians are doing, that we should be able to use our own tax dollars right. to do that. Right. I mean, if they can use our tax dollars, why shouldn't we be able to use our what tax dollars? What was the answer? And and I would even go so far as to say that if if uh, if we win, then the the city or government, whatever government agency it is would have to reimburse us. If we lose, then we would pay the bill. Right, I think that right, would seem right, fair. Right. But I, I don't think that's going to make much headway any place. But, uh, <laughs> but I think it's a good issue to bring up. Uh, now, what about uh, Commissioner Medora? Isn't he, isn't, he isn't he a commissioner? Clark commissioner Medora is, is, is a real, true representative of the people. Okay. I mean, I, uh, I and many, many of us in, the, in Clark County uh, really uh, uh, welcome him and admire him. Mm -hmm. And he really and truly... Uh, uh, is a representative of the people, mm -hmm. and uh, he's uh, asking a lot of questions, uh, and he's not getting all the answers that he wants. 
uh, uh, for instance, uh, <coughs> I was at a, a Clark County Commission meeting just uh, this past Monday, and uh, the uh, human, uh, uh, humane society people uh, want three hundred and twenty-two thousand five hundred dollar budget this year uh, to pay for their expenses. And Commissioner Medora uh, has kind of put a hold on that because he has asked twice now if he could see how much salaries these people are getting. Right. And they, they have yet to produce the information that, that he wants. So he's, he's, being, uh, uh, he's, he's being steadfast and you know, he, he would like to see where the money's going, why it's going, and, and, and it's, uh, the, their budget has increased something like 168% uh, over the last few years. So Madara is, uh, I think he's the kind of politician we need. Well, you know what's interesting about this? Now, he ran for office, right. spent, spent money to run for office. He gets elected, okay? Mm -hmm. Now he's sitting in a position that he should be able to ask the question. Yeah. And now here he's sitting in this position. Now he, he has to go in his pocket again to hire someone like Tiffany yeah. <laughs> outside of government yeah. to come and get an answer for him. Yeah. And he's paying yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah. it's a... Yeah. Uh, but there's, there's something something wrong here. Yeah, there's a lot of things wrong. Uh, I, <clears throat> uh, I'm having a uh, fundraiser uh, next Saturday on uh, the 23rd in uh, in Vancouver to help us pay for our attorney fees for our uh, our lawsuit. And in doing so, I uh, traveled up and down Main and Broad Street in Vancouver, mm -hmm. uh, talked to all of the not all but many many of the business people there. Mm -hmm. They are all almost without exception adamantly against light rail, bringing light rail through through that downtown area because that construction phase is going to take five, six, seven years. Oh, yeah. And uh, it'll, it'll just decimate all of, all of those businesses. And, uh, uh, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a born skeptic, but it, it's been my opinion, and I've expressed this with uh, some, of the, some of the business people down there that... Uh, that uh, that one of the reasons that, uh, that they're so adamant about doing this is that uh, if light rail comes through that downtown area and uh, and all those businesses go out of, go out mm -hmm. go out of business, uh, then the uh, movers and shakers, uh, the uh, multi-millionaire developers and whatnot, will be able to come in and buy up all that property at fire sale prices. Wow. And uh, this is my opinion. Right. And uh, and when they do, and if light rail comes through, uh, I don't know how many people are aware of a, of a object called Agenda 21, but when people, if you, when people then construct uh, rental businesses, uh, hotels, uh, apartment buildings, and like along uh, uh, light rail lines, mm -hmm. they get pretty good property tax breaks. Mm -hmm. So you know, so uh, <clears throat> well. Where is this? Let me ask you a question. Where is the state of Washington? As my understanding, the state of Oregon has already said okay to the four hundred. They have, if you will, the half a billion dollars uh, to put into the pot. Where is Washington? Did you did you know of right now? This Washington, point? right now, from uh, what I've been able to, to see, is is kind of uh, on on the fence. Uh, there's a, there's a, a a large group of uh, Republican uh, uh, senators who. Uh, uh, who have expressed a uh, a dislike for the Columbia River crossing in its present form, mm -hmm. and uh, and some of them are opposed to to light rail, uh, and so uh, it it depends. That uh, I think there's a it's almost a tie in the in the Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the House, uh, there's no doubt in anyone's mind that the, that the House of Representatives in Washington will will vote to uh, borrow the 450 million dollars like uh, Oregon did mm -hmm. and uh, but there's there's some question as whether the whether the whether the uh, the proponents of uh, light rail have enough have enough votes uh, to do it so uh, should be voted on I would say within the next week or so so we shall see but the there's <clears throat> probably a, a good outside chance that uh, that the uh, that the, the Senate will uh, will reject Mm -hmm. Borrowing that eight hundred, four hundred and fifty million dollars to uh, fund light light rail and uh, CRC bridge.
Tell me this, when in, in some of those discussions, did you ever hear uh, in, in, in part of the presentation of talking to the employment, let's say if the bridge will be built or whatever, as far as Washington's participation in terms of the jobs, percentage of the of the work, if you will, that will be going to Washingtonians, or the percentage of the work that was going to be going to Oregonians, let's say 15, 20 percent or something like that. Did you hear anything like that? Yeah, well, there, there, there's, there's been some talk uh, about... Uh, getting some legislation passed, which I don't think has been done yet, that would uh, require uh, work to be done by Washington, on Washington's side of the river, be done by Washingtonians, that uh, contractors be from the state of Washington. Right. Mm -hmm. and, so uh, that so was discussed. That, that's be, that's but nothing being, specific. being discussed, but nothing has been concrete. They uh, attempted to get a bill passed that would require the, uh, the steel okay. uh, to be used to build a bridge and whatnot, uh, be basically come from a local uh, uh, within a, I forgot what the radius was, three mm -hmm. or six hundred mile radius, but I, I don't, that, that didn't make it through the, through the uh, legislature, mm -hmm. I don't believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it look, look like we got some problems here. I mean, I, that's, I think that's the frustration with the, with the public and the voter at this point in time. We, you know, the things are coming up like, for instance, Term limits, for instance, uh, mm -hmm. the, the word term limit. You've, you've heard of that one. Yeah, I've heard of that one. It looks like you know these guys. They stay. They continue to stay on, right? Right. Fair. And um, so we got some problems. Mm -hmm. So what do you think we're going to go? What do you think? Where do you think this is going to go? And your what's your well, gut feeling about this? Uh, you know, I I have I have some 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 high hopes because uh, I've been talking to a lot of people and uh, and uh, and so forth and and a lot of people are getting. I don't know how soon it's going to happen but i know it it it, it is going to happen uh, in the not too distant future that <clears throat> that the people are people are going to say uh, you know you know we we need to be involved i mean taxes are just becoming uh coming out outrageous and uh it i have it takes every bit of willpower that i have uh, whenever i sit in one of these political meetings or whatnot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to not jump up and scream when I hear a politician saying, "Well, we've uh, we've got to get the federal dollars," and mm -hmm. and uh, and I want to get up and scream and say, "Guys, where do you think the federal government gets their dollars from?" I said, "They just come out of one of our other pockets." I said, that, "You know, it's not free money, right, but, right, they, right, but, right, they, right. but they but they continually." Uh, I heard that I don't know how many times yesterday that we got to get these federal dollars before someone else gets them uh, or whatever. But uh, they they have no idea that you know I keep preaching that government does not have any money at all. They don't have a, one red dime. Uh, the only money they have is what they take out of our pockets. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tell me this: Would you think that um, if we took this to the people, if you will, again to the people? To uh, both in Oregon and Washington, put it on the ballot, then have the discussion. What do you think the end result would be? I think uh, I think that would fail. I think the people do. You know, I mean, you you, you can just look what's happened here in Portland now. <clears throat> How many times have people voted against light rail, yeah. and yet they went ahead and did it anyway? Uh, we in uh, in uh, Clark County in Vancouver, we have said no to light rail three times. The last being just past November, and uh, and yet they say we don't care. We're going to do it anyway. So, so uh, what do we do, man? I mean, I'm, uh, I'm still trying to figure well, uh, what I, I think that we, the people, we need to establish our own term limits. Right, and, right. And and I think and there, there's a downside to it because I think <clears throat> we need to vote out of office just about every incumbent. Yeah. And. Uh, and do that two or three times until they f get the idea that, you know, you know, you know, we better start listening to these people because if we don't, we're only going to have a one-term thing because, uh, because uh, when they get, uh, I always refer to uh, most politicians as sitting in their cushioned seat of authority, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, they are oblivious to everything else that's going around them, and. Uh, and uh, most of them uh, start campaigning for the next election as soon as they get elected. So, mm -hmm. well, you know, it's interesting you make that too because I, I just happen to be a business person sitting on the on the island, uh, Hayden Island, and uh, 
and my representative is um, Representative Tina Kotek. Mm -hmm. And I've called her on several occasions to try to come here and, and talk to the people. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those people. Mm -hmm. But uh, naturally, she's declined, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uh, so we got some problems, you know, and mm -hmm. so what we do. But I really think that I think maybe one of the ways yes. to, 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 as a solution on both, for both sides of the fence would be to put it back on the table to the people yeah, I, and call I, for the vote. Uh, call for the vote yeah. on, on yeah. both sides well, of the deal. Well, you know, getting, getting back to uh, uh, Commissioner Medora, uh, yes. you know, I used to go to, I used to go to commission meetings uh, frequently. And after he got elected, uh, I had the opportunity to talk to him, and he said, "He said, Larry, you can come back and commission me because now, from now on, there's going to be a two-way conversation." Wow! So wow. That, that that was very, very heartening, and uh, you know, very nice to hear. Oh, you know, but the thing is, that here's a guy who went out, he ran for office, he spoke to his people, and got elected. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea was basically to ask some questions and right. to be in a position to basically represent his constituents. Right. But yet and still, he can't even get the answer. And he has to go out and implore someone yeah. out of his pocket <clears throat> to come out and get some of these answers. I would not have known Tiffany had it not been for this commissioner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, huh? yeah. So he, who's representing us? Yeah. I mean, well, this is... This is he, well, he's... Yeah, he's, uh, he's doing a good job. And he's got a... But he's one vote. He's got, yeah. Well, I How think many folks here? Who, else, who else is on that commission? I think uh, the other commissioner will uh, will come around to his way of thinking. Uh, commissioner Melky. Melky. Yeah, I think. Okay. He, but uh, you know, he's a, but uh, but he's a he's a very uh, a very convincing man, and he's yes. uh, he's a very nice man, and uh, uh, and uh, he's a uh, and he definitely has has the. Uh, uh, people in mind whenever whenever he does okay. something. He, every question every question that he asks, you know, has to do with how is this going to affect the people. Well we'll do everything we can here at the Oregon Voters Digest to really educate the people as much as we possibly mm -hmm. can. And again we want to thank uh, Commissioner David Medora uh, to basically mm -hmm. be representing the folks mm -hmm. and and uh, I really think that we need to put this thing back on the ballot. Mm -hmm. Really on both sides of the aisle. Mm -hmm. the, 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 well, the, I say we're well we're I and my friends are working hard. Okay, well that's a good deal. Well thank you very much okay. for being with us. Okay, good. Yeah. Folks, thank you very much. You'll join us next week and trust me, we're going to continue to follow up on this business. Again, this is Bruce Bashari. Have a good one. We'll talk to you soon. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. Look at the show. Take care. Thank you.